In the Second World War, one of the most terrifying things an Allied sailor could have witnessed was the effects of a submarine, and not knowing if any second could lead to an impact from a torpedo. This video will cover the famous anti-submarine projector, Mark 10, also known as the Hedgehog. Originally, I intended to cover a vast array of anti-submarine warfare weapons, but I found them to be a lot more in depth than I originally anticipated, so I will be breaking them up into multiple videos. So, this video will focus on one of the main components to battle the undersea threats. The Hedgehog itself was developed by the British Department of Miscellaneous Weapons Development. It was based on the spigot mortar, which was developed in the interwar period and owed its design history to trench mortars. The Hedgehog would enter service in early 1942. Each projectile had a 35 pound torpex charge or 30 pounds of TNT, a diameter of 7.1 inches, and weighed in at around 65 pounds in total. The projector that the charger sat on was four cradles of six spigots. They could be adjusted to compensate for lead and ship movement. Eventually, this would be upgraded to a gyro stabilized mount. Due to the way a spigot mortar works, that being the propelling charge was attached to the projectile itself that worked against the spigot that sat inside the tail of the projectile. This led to a heavier projectile, but you wouldn't need to reinforce the deck to handle the initial firing state. The projectiles would be fired electrically by a ripple switch in pairs. The highest trajectories would be fired first. This is done so that all 24 will land in a circular or elliptical area approximately 100 feet in diameter at about roughly the same time. The cradles would be mounted on the ship's foredeck being able to have a range of 250 to 280 yards. The crews would be able to reload a full set in about three minutes. Given the projectile's weight and their trajectories, the projectiles would sink at about 23 feet per second, meaning they could hit a submerged submarine relatively quick. They were set up this way as the submarine had a habit of fighting the sonar minimums early on in the war, where the output and returning pings merged. Where it is here that a submarine would effectively be in a blind spot and it would allow them to do evasive maneuvers while still being out of depth charge range. There are several key advantages for the Hedgehog when compared to similar anti-submarine weapons at the time, like depth charges. When a depth charge goes off in the water, even if it doesn't affect the submarine, it could still make sonar ineffective for a short period of time due to the disturbance created in the water. And unlike depth charges that both needed to be set to the correct depth and be close enough to do sufficient damage to eliminate a submarine, the Hedgehog would only detonate on contact, and with the amount of explosive charge in it, it was almost always enough to sink a submarine in one or two hits. Now the question on your mind probably is, was the Hedgehog effective? Well, initially no, and due to inexperience and distrust in the new system, mainly due to a total miss with the projectiles result in no response, no explosions, whereas with death charges always exploding, this would lead crews to believe that they have done more damage to the submarine than they actually have. To rectify this distrust and inexperience, the British Department of Miscellaneous Weapons Development sent out officers to increase the knowledge of the weapons with the crews as well as give direct examples of how it's been effective in the past. As a result, and a direct proof of this weapon being highly effective, the Kriegsmarine began pushing for its acoustic submarines in an effort to better hide the submarines and prevent them from becoming the prey. Switching over to the Pacific Theater, USS England, a Buckley-class destroyer escort, sank six Japanese submarines in a two-week period in May of 1944 with this system. Statistics also speak wonders on the device's effectiveness, where on average one in five attacks with the Hedgehog would produce a kill, whereas with death charges, only one in every 80 attacks would yield a kill. The Hedgehogs, despite its initial delay in success, would be deployed on Allied convoy escort warships, seeing action in all theaters of the war. The Hedgehog would see its service life last far past the end of the Second World War, it would still remain in use even though the Americans and British kept trying to replace it. In fact, it was even still in service by the US Navy until the end of the Cold War. And with that said about the Hedgehog, its effectiveness, and its history, we're going to wrap up another video. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I appreciate all the support, it really does mean a lot. And I promise I will start uploading more regularly, as in ideally once a week. I'm still trying to adjust to my new schedule, but we'll get there eventually. And with all that said, I hope you have a good one, and I'll catch you on the next one.